Now that the Modern Warfare 3 campaign is out, in this video I'll show you how to optimize the game for the best possible performance. This one's not going to focus on Windows optimization at all, instead in the description you'll find the usual Windows 10, 11 and Nvidia optimization guides to help you maximize your FPS game. This is also going to be a quicker rundown as I've gone through a lot of information before regarding this game and previous ones. Anyways, let me know if you like the new style. So on the main menu, head into settings on the top right, followed by graphics and and we'll start here. Display mode, make sure this is full screen for the best performance, preferably full screen exclusive. As I need to change the resolution on my ultra wide to record, I'm keeping it on borderless. Display adapter should be the highest powered GPU in your system, especially if you have an integrated chip or you're on a laptop. Screen refresh rate should match your monitor and so should the display resolution over here. You can only change these if you're playing in full screen exclusive mode. Aspect ratio is your preference. VSync should definitely be turned off unless you're getting screen tearing, custom frame rate limit, expand this, and you'll want to customize things somewhat like I have here. Your gameplay frame rate should be pretty much maxed out for the best performance unless you're streaming or recording and other programs like OBS are struggling. Simply just lower this to slightly below the number of FPS you're getting in a game and you'll save just enough graphics power for streaming slash recording software and possibly video players such as YouTube if they're stuttering as well. Otherwise, if you're just a normal gamer, uncap this. Then, menu frame rate should be a little bit lower to save you a bit of heat and extra power used. You can set this to 60 or even more conservatively if you wish, but if you're not really stressed about thermals or power usage, set this to whenever you want. And finally, out of focus, if you're playing in windowed or anything like that, where you see the game when you're tabbed out, such as in a browser, if you have this option lower, you'll notice more GPU and power available when you're tabbed out, some other applications don't seem laggy. If you have this too low, however, it'll be a bit jarring if you can see the game window in the background behind other programs. These are what I have mine set to. Then restarting shaders, you should definitely do this after completing this optimization guide and there's not really much we need to check here. Display gamma should match your type of screen, sRGB is usually the most common so you'll choose 2.2 here, otherwise 2.4 for TVs. Brightness is your preference, just make sure it's not too bright otherwise everything will seem really washed out. You'll definitely notice this in gameplay. Then you can enable constraint mask to game window if you find that when you're flicking and clicking, you're tabbing out of the game. Focus mode, I'd recommend keeping off as it just blacks out your other monitors. Nvidia Reflex low latency should be turned to on if you have an Nvidia graphics card. If you have a powerful GPU and a much lower powered CPU, set it to on plus boost. HDR is your preference and you should set this to however you like the game, but do keep in mind you'll need an HDR display to properly see changes here. Then on the quality tab, starting from the very top preset, choose whatever closest matches your system. You'll know if it's higher powered or lower powered, then we'll either work our way down or up. Render resolution should always be 100% unless you've changed everything else to the minimum. This is your last resort. Dynamic resolution off and upscaling should be set to off preferably, but you do see a huge boost in performance if you use quite literally anything on this list here. XESS has been giving lots of people good results, otherwise NVIDIA cards can use DLSS or NVIDIA image scaling. You'll find differing performance with these two options here, and you can only use DLSS on RTX graphics cards, and IS I think you can use anyway. AMD FSR 1 and 2, you can choose either option here, but you'll notice that FSR 2 costs slightly more VRAM. You'll definitely probably not want to use NVIDIA DLAA as that won't really gain you anything other than extra sharpening if you're already playing on native resolution as in having this off and finally Fidelity FX CAS can definitely improve your image quality but does come with a slightly bigger performance cost than something like FSR. Ultimately this is your preference. For me I'll leave it as NVIDIA image scaling as it just seems to work the best for me. DLSS sometimes leaves weird artifacts especially when you have it pushed to the higher end when it comes to trees shimmering and weird visual artifacts that make playing in a competitive Twitch shooter a little bit distracting. NIS just works fine for me, but this is all your preference. XESS has been on the rise as well and may be better for 
you. Basically, with whatever one of these options you choose, you'll have an option to choose a preset between performance and quality. If you have this on the quality end, it'll shrink your display a little bit and use AI to upscale it. The more to the performance side you push it, the smaller the game is actually rendered at and the more AI needs to work to fill in the gaps. Beyond a certain point, you'll notice weird visual artifacts that aren't supposed to be there and can be very distracting in gameplay. That's why I'd recommend starting at ultra quality and only working your way down if you really need it. For me, I'll leave it on ultra quality and I think for now I'll try out XESS, but to be honest, XESS, DLSS and FSR all give you great results. Then, if you have a sharpening option such as for DLSS, you'll usually want to set this anywhere between 30 and 100% depending on what you like. Then, VRAM scale target, you should set this anywhere between 60 and 80% for the best possible performance depending on how much VRAM your graphics card has. Ultimately, from my understanding, this doesn't do too much, but it may help actually quite a lot if you're on a lower end system with much less VRAM available where multiple applications are fighting over it. Usually 80% is a good spot and on super high-end cards you could probably even raise this. That is if you have pretty much nothing else running on your system. Variable rate shading, if you have this option available such as with Nvidia Image Scaling, you should definitely turn this on. You also get it with FSR 1.0 but that's really about it. Then details and textures, I'll quickly run through this as there's a lot. This should be set to whatever your graphics card can handle. You'll see a VRAM target in the bottom right, simply just adjust it to whatever suits you most. Having this set too high using too much will cost you performance but having it set too low will basically cost you nothing at all except for visual quality. So I'll leave this on high. Anisotropic filtering should also be set too high as it has a very small performance impact and a slight visual improvement. Depth of field is your preference. Usually I'll turn this off just for slightly better visibility. Detail quality level should be set to high if you can handle it, but having it set to the lower options for multiplayer rather than the campaign which we're currently optimizing for may be beneficial in some situations as you can see here. For the campaign though, high is probably what you want just as it'll look a lot better. Particle resolution should be set to low as anything higher can result in some weird stutters and things like that, especially when a lot is going on. You can raise this if you're more comfortable. Bullet impacts should definitely be on for a slight tactical advantage. Persistent effects should be turned off for the best performance, but of course this does add a little bit of life to the game as it leaves scarring on the map. Then shader quality should be set to probably about medium, but if you drop it to low, you'll gain about 12 to 15% performance. On-demand texture streaming should be turned off as it'll usually cause stuttering, but you can leave it on and customize it as you see fit. Streaming quality should be set to low for the best, most consistent performance, and there's a small VRAM difference between these two here. Then scrolling down, shadow quality at ultra just makes things look a lot better, but you can lower this if you need more performance. We'll get there later on. Screen space shadows should be set to either high or off, as low will give you weird artifacts and glitches. Usually I'd recommend having this set to high, as it usually doesn't cost too much performance. Performance. Ambient occlusion should be set to static objects. Screen space reflections too high once again, otherwise normal can look a bit weird. It's either a choice between off or high. Then static reflection quality should also be set to high as it has a great visual improvement. Scrolling down, environment tessellation should be set to all. Terrain memory should be set to max. Volumetric quality to medium as you won't really gain anything on high. In terms of visuals, deferred physics quality should be set to off for the best, most consistent performance. Weather grid volumes set to normal. Then water quality, this is your preference. Each of these have their own performance costs, but also greatly improve how it looks when you're in or around water. Water caustics allows you to see light rays and light waves through the water hitting the ocean floor, which makes it look quite a bit more lively and better. Wetness allows when people climb out of the water, a wet effect on them. Usually, if you're running a lower end system, set this to water caustics or default. And if you're running a higher end system and you like how the wetness looks, you can choose the last option here instead. That's sort of the optimized settings if you'd like a really good looking game while still getting pretty good performance. Let's talk what to drop if you need more performance. 
Obviously, first of all, it'll probably be texture resolution as this has a huge impact on how much VRAM the game uses, between needing 6 gigs and needing only 3. Low is usually what you'll choose here, but you can drop it lower if you need more performance. Then, I'd recommend changing particle resolution, if you haven't already, to low, shader quality to low as well to gain 12-15% to performance, scrolling down tessellation to off, volumetric quality to low, and weather grid volumes to off at the bottom here. If you still need more performance, we can turn off some of the other options such as screen space reflections and screen space shadows, so off and off, and ambient occlusion is another option you can disable. These ones just generally have a medium cost, but they do have a great impact on how the game looks and feels. The rest of these options are a little bit iffy, and for the most part we've disabled the more expensive ones anyway. Finally, on the view tab, I'll apply here and yes as well. Field of view is your preference. While this does technically affect your FPS, set this to whatever you're most comfortable with, as well as ADS field of view, weapon field of view, and vehicle field of view. Motion blur for the world, I'd recommend turning off as it greatly improves your vision. You can leave weapon motion blur on if you'd like, but you can turn it off depending on what you feel. Film grain, I'd usually recommend leaving on the lower end, maybe about 10% or so, otherwise you can turn it off completely. It just adds a little bit of style to the game. For the camp, Pain, you may want this higher on the 20-ish percent area. Then for a tactical advantage, you can lower your first person and third person camera movement, and it can also help alleviate motion sickness symptoms, which can also be affected by motion blur and probably field of view as well. Finally, inverted flashbang, you can enable this just to make it a bit more bearable, especially at nighttime. On the audio tab, I'd recommend changing your audio mix to cinema if you're playing the campaign, just to get a more immersive experience. Footsteps will be quieter and explosions will be louder. The difference between the two are far more pronounced the further we go down on this list. For a tactical advantage, you can of course set it to PC speaker for the tightest dynamic range, meaning that explosions and footsteps will be around the same volume, making it very easy to hear things moving around, especially people in multiplayer. But for the campaign, cinema is a really good choice for an immersive gameplay experience. With everything saved, you'll need to restart your game, and not to mention, as it's a brand new game, updating your graphics card driver as well if you haven't already done so. Anyways, that's about it. Enjoy the Modern Warfare 3 campaign, and when the full game releases, I'll probably have another guide more focused towards multiplayer, so I'll see you all then. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!